right, so we've got some labs back. These are all maybe a little bit outside of the normal range, but whenever everything is abnormal like this, you want to look for something that really stands out as being significantly abnormal. And in this case here, that is our glucose. We are four times above the upper limit of normal. So this is a very high blood glucose. And then we're going to interpret our ABG as part of answering this question, which asks us, the nurse should recognize that the client's blood gas demonstrates what imbalance that is likely caused by what cause of the imbalance. So the first step to interpreting any acid-base imbalance is first just to figure out, is it an acidosis or an alkalosis? And we do that by looking at the pH. So is our pH low or high? Your reference range for pH is 7.35 to 7.45. So this pH is low. And remember, a low pH means a high number of hydrogen ions or an acidosis. Then the next thing we want to know is what is the cause of that acidosis? So an excess of acid that buffers your bicarb or a loss of bicarb like through stool or certain kidney problems can cause an acidosis. So either because your CO2 is essentially an acid and your bicarb is a base, B for bicarb, B for base. So I should expect that if I have either too much acid or not enough base that this would create an acidosis. So which one do I have in this case? Well, my normal reference range for CO2 is between 35 and 45, so this is normal. But then my bicarb, your reference range for bicarb is 21 to 28, and so this is quite low, and that means we are looking at a metabolic acidosis. Because this is a rationale question, this has to be a logical pair of cause and effect. So I first want to consider, could each of these things cause a metabolic acidosis? So could a diabetic ketoacidosis cause a metabolic acidosis? Well, it's kind of a little bit in the name but the byproducts of that fat metabolism, the same problem that caused his acetone breath, the byproducts of that are very acidic, those acidic ketone bodies. So that bicarb number becomes low because that bicarb is now trying to buffer all of this excess acid. So you're using up a lot of your bicarb and your bicarb buffer system. So yes, a diabetic ketoacidosis could create a metabolic acidosis. Then our Kussmaul respirations. So what kind of acid-base imbalance would that create? Well, of the components of our arterial blood gas, your respirations, remember, control your level of CO2. So if you're breathing very rapid and very deep, which is what your small respirations are, then you're going to be blowing off a lot of CO2, and you're going to see your CO2 fall, and that will create a respiratory alkalosis. So now you might, if he has these small respirations, then why doesn't he have a respiratory alkalosis? Well, he actually kind of does. So this is his body's attempt to compensate for a metabolic acidosis. We we have got way too much acid in our blood, and so his body is breathing off excess CO2, breathing off excess respiratory acid to try and sort of induce a respiratory alkalosis to balance that severe acidosis. So yes, he has Kussmaul respirations, but no, that is not the cause of his acid-base imbalance. That is a compensatory mechanism for his acid-base imbalance. And then finally, hyperglycemic hyperosmolar syndrome. DKA and hyperglycemic glycemic hyperosmolar syndrome, or HHS, are really similar in that they're both acute complications of diabetes. But diabetic ketoacidosis occurs in clients with type 1 diabetes who have no insulin. Their pancreas does not produce any insulin, so you cannot have any glucose entering your cells without giving insulin. Whereas HHS occurs in type 2 diabetics. This is where you have increased insulin resistance. So you're able to produce insulin, but your cells just aren't responsive to that insulin, but because you do still have some level of circulating insulin, you don't develop the ketoacidosis part of DKA because you're still able to metabolize some glucose. So you don't develop acidosis, you don't develop ketosis. You just have a very high blood sugar, which makes your blood very hyperosmolar or very concentrated. So of these, not only is diabetic ketoacidosis the only one that makes sense in this cause and effect pair, but we also have all the evidence of it, right? This fits it's the picture. So he's about the right age to have onset of his type 1 diabetes. This would explain his weight loss over several months as he has not been able to metabolize any glucose. So he has been attempting to metabolize his own body tissues, his organs, his fat, his muscles. And then of course the ketosis explains the fruity breath and then the small respirations is a compensation for this acidosis. So this fits the picture and it makes sense to explain this acid-base imbalance. And we're correct.